Good morning, YouTube family. This is Eric from d &E Garage, and I'm off to Marcy, New York, for what, you guessed it, the U-Pole. Today's mission is to retrieve a new media uh, temperature console for Buick Park Avenue, spare alternator and power steering pump for my 2010 Outback, and a new door latch for the trunk of Barney. Let's see what we find. Hey guys, I just in the back of this Jeep here, and I thought we got lucky and found brand new parts. But it turns out it looks like they're just used ones. It's very unfortunate. Also, also, who doesn't love Jeep Girl? That's a cool sticker. I want to get that for my wife when I get her a Jeep. She doesn't have a Jeep now. She has a Subaru. But when I get a Jeep, she wants a Wrangler. I'm going to try to get her one eventually. But got to get that sticker. I like it. It looks like us Jeep boys all wire the same with some household 8 gauge wiring. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look that bad. No heat shrink or anything like that. Crimping. But that is fun to laugh. It just random wires ran into the car. Anything good in here? No. Ooh, it smells though. Oh, there's a little switch, toggle switch. Maybe for lights. Well, look what I found. A little ZJ action. Oh, look at this. The whole valve cover is pulled off. So, any of you guys hear us talk about flat tapped uh, rockers and why we need zinc oil in our furrows? This is the reason why. So, that is flat tapped. Usually, what you see here is a little roller ball bearing. And that's, um, they actually do put them on this aftermarket and it gives you a little more extra power. But uh, this is why we need zinc oil. All the flat tapped. So yeah, here's a little ZJ action. Let's see how bad she is. She's rotted. Worse than mine. Oh, nice seats though. Looks like uh, Project Dan's um, General Grievous. <clears throat> oh, somebody took what I wanted. That's gone. I was gonna go in this Jeep. But it can smell it from the outside. Scuzzy. Scuzzy in here, guys. Dirty, dirty. No. <laughs> what is this? Why is this here? <laughs> it is <a> pop. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's just a pop. That's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Call that redneck engineer in there, guys. <laughs> this is what we all need in our jeeps guys from chains on the front right there guys i feel like oh, i'm sorry guys i feel like the world's trying to tell me i should buy a minivan every time i've come to this yard so far there's been minivans just sitting all in a row right when i pass them i mean look that's what six seven of them Should I do it? Should I do it? I think not. My wife would kill me. But you have so much room for activities. This is a darn shame. This is just sad to me. This is one of my dream cars. This looks to be like a 19... Let's check the taillights. I can tell you about taillights. Sixty-eight. Yes, yeah, the tail lights go in in the back here. Ford Mustang. Probably looked gorgeous. Man, got charred up though. Charred up good. You guys follow uh, any other channels? There's a D DIY gang. Um, he's rebuilding a. Hellcat that got caught on fire and this reminds me of this kind of how he got his it was just like this but even worse now, this car be a hell of a lot of years to rebuild because there's no electronics in it really not much I think this could have been saved to be honest but probably went through some insurance plan because it looked like it might have been in good condition Whew. that is a darn shame folks took the motor out though 
and trains. Okay guys, my current new DD is what you're staring at. 2003 Buick Park Ave. I had it in a video recently explaining things I hate about Chevy and GM. And I want to pull that and see if that works because mine is bad. It was a little scuzzy in here, so we're going to make this happen fast as possible because I smell mold. I smell a lot of mold. Okay, I'm going to go at it. Okay, so, what I'm going to do here is test to see if that thing works up there by putting my uh, little battery to my gun to the positive and negative of the battery of the car terminals, battery terminals. Which happens to be in the under the back seat in this one. We're yeah. not idiots. Well, we are, but... Oh, have a good day. Stuff that guy in there. Scared me. I'd kick it off. It works, it works, it works. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that got hot in my hand. That got hot in my hand. Sorry, I moved the camera when the horn started going, but it did work. <laughs> the thing came on. Delightful. That was about the easiest pull ever. You pop the cover off. And there's two little clips you just pull. I'll show you. It goes right there, you pop the two covers off. Not even screws, you just pinch these two little areas here. Easy. I know Doug and I geek out on these vans, but it's another all-wheel drive Astro van. I really think I just need to get one and suck it up. Look at the room you get. Look at it. Six people. Plenty of cargo space. 4.3 liter on leaf springs. So much fun. I'd off-road this thing on a hell, hell of a heartbeat. Any viewers out there have the all-wheel drive Austria van, you gotta let me know. Just about to get in my car and I look to my left and I see this beaut. I mean, it's not perfect, but considering its age, I like it. I like the visor. I like the wheels. Nice tires on it. Not too much rust, considering its age and it lives in northern New Jersey. I'd take it. Got the flames on to her. Yeah, it's got a lot of rattle cam. Take that back, too. <laughs> I like the wheels, though, with that body style. I always like the visor on them, too. But anyways, I'm done. I'm out of here. Catch you guys later. I am done. I'm out of here. Catch you guys later. Bonus material. Hey, guys. I don't know if you remember yesterday. Oh, my, I don't know when Doug's going to put that video out. We went to you pulled together before. I put a picture of Facebook. There was that um, Aerostar that we found that was four-wheel drive. So Doug, I texted Doug yesterday because he left earlier yesterday uh, from Utica and asked if he wanted anything from the u -pull. And he texted me and said, I want the badge off that Aerostar. And you know why? It's a kind of rocking badge. It's electric four-wheel drive, which I learned a little about yesterday. And I'm going to do another video on it later on. But the actually... Okay, guys. Um, I started talking with Larky here. I don't know where I got my information on when I first did the research about the transfer case and the Aerostar. But um, it is uh, a rear-wheel drive bias transfer case, and they used a TC or Dana, uh, I think it's TC, uh, or NP, NP, TC, same thing, they're same manufacturer, uh, 28, which is a computer-controlled all-wheel drive uh, transfer case. So basically, um, just to keep it short and sweet here, what it was is that normal, most driving conditions, it was in rear-wheel drive. And when you detected um, slip, it would throw one third of the power to the front wheel drive, front wheel drive axle. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. It acts a lot like um, a two four nine. It has electronic viscous coupler, which activated by the ECU and electromagnetics. It locks the front to send up some power, uh, some locks the transfer case, some some power to the front. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I want to do another video on this later that's a little more in depth, um, comparing all the four wheel drive aspects into vans at the time, early 90s and 80s. Um, so, these transfer cases are really not meant for off roading or anything like that, just kind of if you get stuck in snow or in bad weather. So, without further ado, we'll finish out the video. Abilities, I guess, I don't know what
I just want to share that little fun fact with you guys while I had it in my head and tell you that Doug really likes his old school badges and he has a little collection. Maybe we'll show him again on the channel sometime soon. But I got it for him. With that, 